Introducing the new Verizon Business Unlimited plans. For as low as $30 per line with AutoPay, get 5G nationwide, plus massive data capacity, plus spam blocking features, plus mix and match the right plans for your business. Get more of what you need, none of what you don't. From Verizon, the network businesses rely on. 5G nationwide available in 1,800 plus cities on most VZ 5G devices. Monthly per line pricing with 5 plus lines on Biz Unlimited start, device payment, smartphone purchase. Auto pay and paper free billing required. Terms apply. Empire. Deal back to Hachimura. Um, first off, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It was more just shocking to hear from him and understanding that he gets the most assists from me and the most spoon-fed baskets ever. You know, the culture is actually damn good. To sit up there and to say you don't have a culture problem in the nation's capital, everything about the organization points to a culture issue. One guy took his s*** in another guy's shoe. I'm a little pissed off about it, but I know how I am. I was kind of expecting it. It's disrespectful. It was like Eric Killmonger going for total domination. What up is my? We're not going to be fucking sunk this year. We're the Stanley Cup champions. Yeah! This podcast is all over social media. So follow us on Twitter at Beltway Bro Pod, Instagram at Beltway underscore sports underscore bros underscore podcast. Also the Facebook group, just search Beltway Sports Bros Podcast. And you can also find us at BeltwaySportsBros.com. There's a podcast player right on the front page. If someone you know doesn't want to or know how to download a podcast app or even knows what a podcast is, just tell them to go to the website and hit play. Simple as that. Thank you for joining us today. We are the Beltway Sports Bros. I'm Matt Vazana, and as always, my brother, Noel. I guess we'll start on a somber note. We wanted to mention that the legendary host of Jeopardy! and something a lot of people don't know one of the most famous Washington football team fans. Huge fan. Yeah, that was brought to my attention just like a couple of years ago. I don't think a lot of people... He No, the only time he ever really brought it up was when somebody would ask him about the name change over the years, and he was an advocate for keeping it, the, keeping it as, as uh, the Redskins. So that's how I found out that he... I was like, what? He's a Canadian dude that likes Washington football team. Well, cool. Yeah. Made me like him even more. Yeah, well... If you don't know who we're talking about, that would be Alex Trebek. He passed away on Sunday at 80 years old after a long battle with pancreatic cancer. You know, he's always been a part of our lives. I know that. (laughs) Well, mom is, she's absolutely heartbroken. I I grew up with the guy. I mean, I, I know it's dumb that we're talking about him on a sports show and all, but it was really a show that, especially for me with mom and she- For us intellectuals, right? For us intellectuals that no trivia that nobody else gives a shit about. It was really a a show that mom and I love to watch together. And I mean, she always killed it. I mean, she is a freaking encyclopedia and should have been on the show. She tried. Well, yeah, she she made the semifinals to make the show. Um, It was a little different back then when she tried out, but... She got a Jeopardy pen out of it. Yeah, she did. She did. But yeah, it it was uh, just another loss for 2020, man. What else is new, you know? One step forward, two steps back in 2020. You know, it's the highs and lows, that's for sure. Well, more lows than highs. Yeah. You text me when I I text you about Trebek. You're like, let's win this one for Trebek. Well, in typical Washington football team fashion. Yeah, no storybook ending here. You know, speaking of depressing, right? Let's talk about the game, shall we? Do we have to? I mean, yeah, I think it's, you know, kind of in our job description. I guess it's what we do, yeah. Better or worse? We've obviously switched to Tuesdays, so we're not going to do a full-on all the show about the Washington football team losses, as they tend to be. But, um, you know, we're going to go over a little bit. I don't know how this will go, because usually we're really angry or yeah, it's more so for it's more so for my heart rate. I think that we <laughs> it's good that we, you know, we talked about before that 24-hour rule, yeah. and I feel a lot better. I mean, I would have been grinding my teeth by now during this conversation and uh probably already yelling at you by now i have no doubt about that (laughs) um well let me uh just go over this really quickly so as usual washington came out slow and we're down 20 to 3 by halftime looked like you know they'd never played football before was the first game of the year i mean but this is the case pretty much for every game except for the cowboys game in reality they just for whatever reason can't come out fast I don't know. I don't know what to say, but five turnovers were too much to overcome, and they lost 23-20 to at home against the Giants. Fell to 2-6, and six, 
behind the Eagles, who are three, four, and one. So um, I'm sure you all saw the brutal, quote unquote, accidental trip by Jabril Peppers that made Kyle Allen's um, ankle what a, explode. What a prick. I know. He saw the whole thing happen, too. He's standing over Kyle. He's looking at it. And you know he saw what he happened. I mean, the fucking thing was 90 degrees. It was perpendicular to his to his leg. I know. And this guy gets up. He's looking at it. Then they give him a, throw him a personal freaking foul on it. And he's bitching at the ref the whole time. This dude has a foot that's almost off. And he is going nuts about this personal foul. And it was a dirty shot. Absolutely. He should have been ejected. Absolutely. That's the exact reason why those plays are not allowed in, in the NFL. But he's just a, a playmaker, just working yeah, hard, man. just yeah. going 100 miles an hour. That's what Rivera said. He actually kind of defended him. He's always going 100 miles an hour. That, so that's why he does a fucking, what are those things, like a breakdance move? Sweep the leg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sweep the leg. <laughs> that's what he did. <laughs> But um, it was confirmed on Monday that Allen will require surgery and will be out of the remainder of the year. Surprise, surprise, yeah, when, your an- when your ankle looks like that. Uh, but I, it actually wasn't as bad as it could have been. He dislocated it and it had a small fracture. It wasn't exactly an Alex Smith, but hey. You know. Well, those are like generational injuries, what <laughs> Alex Smith got. I well, mean, give only, me a break. Only that happens on the Redskins slash Washington football team. Right. Literally generational. <laughs> The Giants dominated in time possession. Bus had a plus five turnover ratio. Disgusting. I don't know what to say. I mean, I Alex. Mean, can we be done now? Not with this speaking about it. I'm saying, can we be done with the facade? <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. They shot themselves completely in the foot in the game. They did everything they possibly could to lose the game. Backbreaking turnovers. I mean, five turnovers are five turnovers. That's just that's that was the difference in the game, Matt. Of course, yeah. Bottom line, there's really no you. Can, we can sit here and break down stats all we want. I mean, the fact that they ran the ball a total of nine times in the game. I mean, it's just they ba- would. it's baffling to me. You bring a backup quarterback in, and it's just so funny going to the Alex Smith situation. And I will say, initially, he was playing well. He was he was making the throws. He was he had, very. On Alex Smith, like he was, he was efficient. I mean, personally, I think the McLaurin touchdown was he threw it in triple coverage, and McLaurin just made a phenomenal jumping catch. And these guys were just how how he got away from that. How he got away from them is baffling to me, but he's just awesome. But I'm saying that it was very on Alex Smith. Like he would have never made that throw. Absolutely, in triple coverage, no way. But the excuses after the game. And the two interceptions, and even even the first one to McKissick, he was going to get eviscerated on that play. There were 50 seconds left in the half. They had one timeout. That play wasn't going to accomplish anything. Just throw it away. I mean, if you go back and look at it, the other two were just awful. And what's Rivera say? We were in desperate times, so you know he was forcing the issue, and he can understand why he threw those interceptions because we were in desperation mode. What? They Double were down standard. by three points in driving, dude. What are you talking about? I- I'm done. I can't. I can't fight the good fight anymore. E- no, even he to- just he just hates Haskins. No, I know. I know. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. Everything that he says, he talks out of both sides of his mouth. We talked about this with Ben Standing. Uh, you know, I brought up the whole double standard thing. There is a double standard. Right. He's promoting the fact, Rivera, I mean, promoting the fact that he has young players and they're going to make mistakes. And that's OK. A lot of rookies and second and third year players. I mean, look at this roster. It's unbelievable. Right. You know, and, and the things that we're doing. I mean, you're two and six, the things that you're doing and they are going to make mistakes. But do not vilify Haskins for making mistakes at the same time. Right. And then when a guy who throws three picks who Haskins he had a game. He threw three picks, and it was almost like he uh, stole his daughter or something. Yeah, you know? it was it was the worst thing in the world. And say, see guys, see guys more more than anything else. And you have a guy that I don't know what Haskins' future is with this football team. Nowhere, but he is the backup now, right? He is. So what are you trying to accomplish here? Quarterback is probably the most important position in all of sports. Oh, there's no doubt, and. You're developing and bragging about these young guys that you're bringing in that are going to make mistakes and going to make mistakes, but yet the most important position on the field you're not giving an opportunity to develop. Plus the fact that Alex Smith threw three interceptions and you're still coddling this guy. Yes, he's rusty. Yes, he kept you guys in the game, brought you back in the second half. Absolutely. But 
Give me a break. It's okay to criticize a guy that's been in the league for 20 years. I'm exaggerating, obviously, but he can take the lumps. Those were bad throws. Yeah, it was just a comedy of errors. That first fumble by Antonio Gibson when, what the fuck? You know, what was that? Uh, it's like it, catching a slippery pig. What the uh, fuck what? was going I don't on know. there? And that kind of started Logan Thomas's shitty game. He really did not step up in this game at all. He had a two really big drops. I know Peppers was on him and made some good plays, but he's got to pull those in. And like he said before, when Logan Thomas is involved, the offense is much better. And yeah. he did not show up for this game. Uh, no, the Isaiah Wright. To me, that was... Did you hear what uh, what Rivera said about that? No. Yeah, we can talk about the, some, some shit that he says, but he was explaining that the punter for the Giants, whatever the hell his name is, kicks the ball and he does this thing where it basically drops... He has some ability to do that. Oh, like a dead ball. Like a dead ball. And so basically, he was making an excuse oh, for that fumble. You oh. played them three weeks ago. You benched his ass after that and put Steve <laughs> Sims in. On the next punt return, Sims was in there. W- what are you doing? I don't know. He's he's like coddling these guys. Oh, don't feel bad. But then just annihilates any any amount of confidence that Haskins has because he throws interceptions playing 11 games or whatever. Yeah. It, it, the hypocrisy is through the roof with this guy. Yeah, I mean, where'd Fabian Moreau go? Oh, he's, the guy he's, had a half a bad game, and bye. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. guy was supposed to be a starter. He was. Has anybody even remembered that he was on the football team? We're starting six-round picks, Curl, and it was so funny when they brought him in. Oh, this guy could have started weeks ago and got literally burned on the next play. He, he must have been learning a lot from Landon Collins because <laughs> the guy can't cover shit, but he's good in the box. Uh, Good job. He he did okay. Uh, He had 11 tackles. He had 11 tackles from the safety spot. I've said before, when your safety is a leading tackler, that's not a good thing. That was another thing. They were getting run all over. Oh, God, yeah. Alfred Morris looked like old school. I wish I would have said it in the preview game. I knew Alfred Morris was playing. (laughs) And I don't know what it slipped my mind. (laughs) Good for him. Good for him. I love the dude. I love Al. You can plug him in in any zone running scheme. Absolutely. You can just see such a difference. Like when Antonio Gibson's trying to a zone run, that just quick cut because he's not used to it or, or right. you know, the guy's a wide receiver, but you can just see the difference. You don't even have to be fast. As long as you make that one cut and decisive, you're good. Yeah. And he just has a nose And for he it. was trucking some people. Oh, yeah. I was rooting for him. I'll be honest with you. And... There's a couple things that I do want to, a couple positives that come from the game. Hopkins looked like an actual kicker, a 44 yarder and a 48 yarder. Yeah. And guess who? Cam oh Sims, the real Sims. Hey, if I'm Cam Sims, I'm thrilled that Alex Smith is in the game because he was actually looking for him. Maybe he was playing with him on the, uh, the scout team or something. Yeah, I don't know. You know, that does happen a lot. A guy yeah. who doesn't start and they come in and they're just used to the, the backups. Right. It's like he leans on him. He knows where he's going to be. I mean, you know, and I think that's what happened here. I've always said with Cam, he's got the size, he has speed, he has good hands, he has all the attributes to be a good receiver in modern day football. Okay. He can go over the middle, he's good after the catch, he's tough to bring down. He has all the attributes. I just genuinely feel like there's been bad circumstances when he got the injury. He looked like he was the one that he was finally going to be taking that step well, he's forward. He's always been a preseason hero. He's always been a preseason hero. And then, the, unfortunately, the last time when it was actually potentially his time, he got injured. And then yeah. Steve Sims kind of came in and took his spot. And then it was, see you later, buddy. The guy's 6'5". They've had such a short attention span with him. Mm-hmm. And I really think he needs to get – I've been vouching for him. And I'm happy to see it. I'm, I'm really happy for him that he got this game in because he was a big difference in that offense on Sunday. Yeah, and he was. And I'd like to see him get more. And I've, I've been on the, the Sims train. Have you? I have. Have you? When? Oh, recently. I haven't been recently? against Recently? I haven't been against the guy. I'm just saying he, he just really hasn't gotten an opportunity. And when he's out there, he seems to produce. My point was he should have had opportunities. There's right. no reason. It's not like they have Jerry Rice and John Taylor on the on <laughs> each side of the ball. I mean, shit. You know, they're always bringing in these guys off the street, and you've got him sitting right there. Give the guy a go. And I'm, well, like anyway, you said, I'm he's, glad. He's been injured. Yeah. And by all accounts, he just is a terrible route runner, or he was. And I think that's what's taking so long for him to get it. And he seems to be getting it all together, and that's good. I mean, he's got all the tools. 
And McLaurin just loves the guy because he doesn't talk. He just works his ass off. Right. And, you know, hey, when the captain speaks, you listen. That's how that works. Well, the season, I can tell you all, and I said this in the preview show, now you're 2-2 two and two in the division. Yes, we're still in it. More than mathematically in it, Noel. This is oh, one of the- God, Matthew. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> to what end? What are you fighting for here? A division? The Eagles are better than Washington. Apparently, the Giants are. I don't give a shit. Hey, they're 2-0 against Washington. We can sit here and quibble over why, two-point conversions, five turnovers. Now they have the the tiebreaker against Washington, right? Easily, yes. So where are we going here? Actually, Dallas actually showed some fight against the Steelers. I was nervous in that game. I was like, you got to be kidding me. See, you're you're feeding into it. You're the problem. I'm not feeding. You're the problem. (laughs) I just want to watch meaningful football at the end of November. It's not. It's all a facade. That's the problem. That's the issue with everyone is that you're rooting for Pittsburgh to beat Dallas because it's going to keep Washington in it. In what? In what? They're one of the worst teams in football, okay? They are. Their defense is above average, and their offense is who knows. They still only scored 20 points against the Giants. Yes, they had five turnovers. They had opportunities. There were also the defense got rolled on a couple of times and they made stops in critical situations against a crappy Giants team. They beat a reeling Dallas team. Rah, rah, rah. Yay, everybody. We beat the Cowboys, but we're not a good football team. So everybody needs to stop calculating and watching games on red zone and saying, oh my gosh, come on Steelers. You got this one. Make this drive, Roethlisberger. My second favorite team is the team that plays the Cowboys, Noel. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hate that watching. Always? Oh, yeah. uh, it's like selling your soul to, to root for Pittsburgh to beat Dallas, though, too, isn't it? I hate Pittsburgh. They're really in the same category as Dallas, right? I mean, yeah. just like Ugh. that bandwagon team that they're not quite on Dallas's level just because of you know what we have with Dallas. But yeah, yeah Pittsburgh... They always Sorry, try I... to play the bully <laughs> and the they're the biggest dude on the basketball court shit. It's just so played out, like hitting guys out of bounds and always starting fights. It's like, we get it. You're Steel cool. Curtain. They got to keep that you know, alive, I yeah. guess, even in 2020. Keep Mean Joan Green in their hearts. <laughs> the hell out of here. But Well, look, you know, some positives for me is that Alex Smith hasn't played in two years. Uh, has one leg, and he actually looked like a serviceable NFL quarterback. He looked better. I know he threw the three picks, but he looked better, really, than any time he did during that that year with Gruden before he got injured. He looked like he was trying to throw the ball down the field. He Apparently, it was in desperation. Well, you know, but now I'm sure he'll, he's going to go right back and do his turtle shell after this. Oh, he's, man, oh, three picks? Oh, please. Oh, my yeah, gosh. That's, that was thinking about that, but even though he's a dink and dunker, at least he's got players around him that are quick and can actually make something out of it. There's worse things in the world to have a dink and dunker on this team because, you you know, with McKissick and Gibson and McLaurin, he turns nothing into something every time he catches the ball. It's not out of the realm of possibility they'll be able to move the ball a little bit. Hey, and they had 250 yards of offense in the second half. They did. That's not nothing. They did produce in the second half. There's no doubt. Alex looked good. They had, good, they had a good scheme going. They had a good pace. I'm not denying that. But you can't say had a good game, but had three picks. The guy's a veteran quarterback. The fact is we lost the wrong Alex. (laughs) Right. Well, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, God rest his beautiful soul. But Uh. (laughs) no, I I was impressed the way Alex Smith played. I really think this was his best game that he's played as as a Washington football team member, however the hell you want to say it. And the fact that, you know, he was trying out there. And I think that him practicing with the starting team this week can only help. And I don't even want to get into the conversation about why are you even starting Alex type of thing. This is a feel good story, this, this and that. Um, Obviously, if I was running the team, Haskins would be the starter from the very beginning and not actually no one else would have saw the field at this point. But this is where we're at. They've got some vendetta against Haskins. And I think that, hey, as we've said with everyone, if they get rid of the turnovers, his team can be halfway decent. To me, yeah. nobody's going to argue with me about they're two and six. One win Haskins has. Yeah. Hey, that's all I got to say about it. You can't tell me that this team wouldn't be two and six with Haskins in it. They might be better. Who knows? We'll never know. And that's the point. 
Mm -hmm. He has not given the opportunity to know what this kid has. And it's very bothersome to me. And we're harping on a guy that is in the twilight of his career. And, and he's going to get released next year. Right. He, he's not, he will never stay. I mean, they're not going to pay him 23 million or whatever it is next year. Right. And let's not forget, I think you at quarterback would have beaten the Cowboys. So assume that Haskins would have won that game as well. Right. Right. So what are we talking about? Exactly. exactly? That's my point. You're bragging on a press conference that you have 25, 30 guys on this roster that are making plays and they're, they're young guys, but you're starting a, a guy in the twilight of his career that maybe has one season left and one last hurrah to hold on to what? A 2-6 and six record and a team that is in the bottom of a division, in the worst division probably in the history of the league. All of a sudden, Rivera's into the analytics game and he's still thinking like you do with the mathematically in the playoff hunt. And in the midst of that, he is not allowing growth at the quarterback position. There's no future in it. I don't know if they plan on drafting one, but we'll see. So. We'll see. But two and six is two and six, and people need to look at it that way. Fair enough. All right. Uh, something not DC sports related, but we just wanted to talk about it because <laughs> it just felt like it. Um, maybe you've heard, but we had no idea. We were trying to look for some stories, and we we're like, oh, shit. Mike Tyson's fighting again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know we were, he was talking about it back in September, but apparently it's happening now. Uh, he's 54 years old. He's going to be fighting 51-year-old Roy Jones Jr. It's going to be an exhibition fight on November 28th. Tyson's first fight in 15 years, if you can believe that. I thought it was longer than that shit. But to see this exhibition, all you have to do is shell out a um, 50 spot, I guess you could say. I mean, right. Yeah, on pay-per-view. fucking right. <laughs> I mean, have you seen these two guys? Have you seen Tyson's videos? Oh, I mean, my he's, Lord. He looks like I mean, a machine out there. I don't I don't want to be in a back alley with that guy. Oh, I mean, what are we talking about? Uh, I wouldn't take Rip him on if he was 80 up. years old. But, I mean, really, Jones-Tyson fight? Come on. It's supposed to be an exhibition match. What does that even mean? I don't know. I Is guess it, it just doesn't mean anything for, so, the, for so, the title, but they're still going to you They're know, still fight. going to beat the hell out of it. Apparently, they're not going for knockdown, so it's not going to be Drago versus Apollo. They're not going for knockdown? No. This is supposed to be an exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's going to die in this one. I don't uh, believe at all that Tyson isn't going to try to go all out. And, and at the end of the day, Roy Jones was always a protect himself kind of guy anyway. He was kind of like Mayweather where he plays for the rounds. So... If there's going to be any action in this fight, it's going to come from Tyson, and he's an insane person. So I mm -hmm. think at some point in time, he's just going to say, fuck it, and just start doing his swinging. If he can breathe through a first round, if he can make it through. It's a joke, though. I can't believe it's actually happening. Hey, you know, I'll watch it. I'm not going to buy it. I'll, you know, I'll watch it on YouTube like three days later or something. It's intriguing. It's sad. Why? It's not, not just two has-beens that are going out for what? What's to be accomplished here? <laughs> they want to make money? Isn't I, that what everything's about? No, though? of course. One last <laughs> one last payday. But he wants to continue on after this. He's made this very clear. Oh, and God. speaking of which, we heard that after this fight, Evander Holyfield has stated that no. he wants to fight Tyson. Come on, man. Yeah, this is according to TMZ Sports. Sources have claimed that Tyson is scared to fight Holyfield because they've actually Holyfield's camp. He still has he still a camp, has apparently. A camp. <laughs> <laughs> or his uh, his handlers, I guess, because the guy can barely speak anymore. But they've put um, <laughs> they've put out multiple offers to Tyson, and he will not respond. And apparently, oh, they're saying he's, that he's scared. He's ghosting him, huh? He's ghosting him. Oh man! Even when they fought the first two times, both those fights sucked. The only well, thing anybody be... remembers is from the fucking head butt to the ear bite. Well, it only lasted. No, I, I, that's what I'm rounds, saying. Right? I mean, really? These guys are still talking shit after all these years? I mean, you want to talk about punch drunk. Holyfield has no business. Oh, my he, gosh. How can he get cleared to be in a ring? They'll clear anyone, Matt. If they cleared Rocky against, uh, <laughs> what, what was it? Mason Dixon. Mason Dixon. <laughs> Mason the line Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> They'll clear anybody. <laughs> I mean, this guy, yeah, he can barely speak. Tyson, he has his own issues. I'm sure he has some mental problems from boxing as well. It's just in a, it's just showing itself in a different way. He's always been fucked up anyway. But these guys, one good shot 
on an older guy like this, what do you do to train? Are they going to spar with guys? If they are, are they going to? They're not ta- going to wear like headgear or anything. Please, are they? they better not. If you're going to go in there, da- hey, <laughs> if you're going to go in there, damn it, you better go in there all out and be prepared to take a shot to the head. And if you go down, you go down. If I'm paying fifty dollars. <laughs> Roy Jones, he's on the HBO boxing. He seems kind of together, sort of. I mean, there are times, there, there, yeah, he's fine. He's yeah. at, totally, completely out of shape. I mean, he was one of the greats. There's no doubt about it. And they've never fought. Like when no, they no, were, no, 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 no. Yeah, he was the best pound for pound for a long time, and then um, he was undefeated, and then got his ass handed to him when he was getting on that downturn. He was never like a huge power punch or anything. He was, like I said, he was kind of like a Mayweather. Protect yourself. If you can get some shots in, win points. That's what's going to make this thing boring because you you know at 51 years old, if he was protecting himself at 30, imagine how he's going to be at 51 years old. Yeah, well, Tyson's not going to be protecting himself. Oh, hell, he never did when he was young. Oh, I know. He's going to go for the kill shot. That's what I mean. This ain't going to be no exhibition. What does he say? Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face or whatever. <laughs> you know, it, this can be an exhibition fight all he wants. But once, you know, he gets in there, he may want to oh, he may you, murder this guy. You know what's going to be said? The press conferences where like Tyson's going to try to talk it up. Boxers do that anyway to get more people to buy in that they hate Still each other wrestling. and shit like that. It's oh, wrestling. Always back to it. It is. I mean, no, it, it is. That, it UFC is. copies. I mean, oh, yeah, it's God, just to sell yes. the fight. Yeah, to, to sell the fight. So imagine these two old farts up there these old fucks are gonna be like yeah i'm gonna take you down like take what down these guys are freaking like probably on uh diabetic medicine at this point there's definitely some interest from my standpoint to see tyson murder somebody else if he i mean if you have you watched his i would uh, rather see him go in there and fight you fight me i wouldn't i wouldn't want to that would be that would be fun (laughs) if he said you know what i'm gonna gonna pick a regular i'm gonna take a regular person (laughs) That would be beast and see what kind of shots a person can take from like you have to sign waivers right. <laughs> like in um like in Spider-Man when he plays when he goes against uh, uh Macho Bozo. Man you know you have to last 3 minutes buzz buzz is ready, ready. <laughs> Yeah you have to last 3 minutes and you get a payday That would be more entertaining than this This is just sad to me I'm I'm kind of intrigued We'll see so I uh, hey I will look to see who won but everybody loses in this why don't they do like a, a seniors branch? You know how they do like in, well, obviously golf, but what also is this, in ten- tennis. No, in tennis too. Like I know McEnroe they do. And, and- because it's a freaking non-contact sport. What you, you want them to come up with next? No, if they're going to do it anyway, why not just, hey, give them a spot. You got some big names oh, still. Oh, God. I, I guarantee this shit will be more popular than the you Oh, know, the heavyweight division. Bo- yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's no, trash. It would. It's all but- about nostalgia. People want to see this shit. Hey, man, why don't they just make a senior football league? They can wheel Joe Namath out. <laughs> Speaking of punch drunk, he's some kind of drunk. Yeah, I don't think that's punch drunk. That's, uh, <laughs> that's just, just way too many bottles, <laughs> bottles of bourbon. Uh, all right. Support for this podcast comes from today's military. You have a calling. We have an answer. You want to have meaning in whatever you do, from improving your community to making the world a better place. You can find that fulfillment in today's military. You have a calling. We have an answer. Learn more at todaysmilitary.com. Moving on to something else here. We got some Maryland football to talk about. Yeah! Hmm? Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw this. The Terps actually destroyed Penn State at Happy Valley 35-19. to It wasn't even that close. They made it look respectable at the end. But Penn State was favored by 27 points in that game. Maryland's now 2-1 and one after beating Minnesota the week before in overtime. Hell of a game. Hell of a game, man. And they were also 25-plus point underdogs in that one. And after playing like dog shit their first game against Northwestern, Talia Tunga Viola has been unreal in, in his last two, throwing for 676 yards, six touchdowns, only one interception, has also rushed for two touchdowns. He's looked awesome. And my USF Bulls have been horrendous this year. I've kind of turned my attention to Maryland. Good for you. But, my Good first love. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. And um, they've got Ohio State coming up next, who's favored by 24 and a half <laughs> points. So I guess they're making progress. If they had lost to Penn State or something, it probably would have been like 50. 40. <laughs> so baby steps. Your season prediction had them winning two total games, if I'm correct. There, they're still at two, that. though. They're still at two. You, you still got a chance. <laughs> so first, why would anyone listen to you about this team? And second, why do you think this team is better than people thought they'd be? Hey, 
I don't give a damn who it is. Nobody thought that they were going to be 2-1 and one at this point. I called the Northwestern game. They got completely annihilated in that. Who the hell knew that Minnesota, who was a good team last year, one of the best offenses in Big Ten, was they were going to lose that game. Hell of a game, man. They played great. It was a, such a fun game to watch. And Penn State's dog shit. They've they're lost, not dog shit. They're 0-3. I know that. I mean, they lost 38-25 to to Ohio State, who Maryland I'm, coincidentally is playing. I'm saying that nobody anticipated Penn State to be where they're at right now, is all I'm saying. They were ranked 18th when they went against Penn State. When they, Excuse me, when they went against Ohio State. They were a team that was anticipated to be one of the high, better teams in the Big Ten. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Now, going into this Ohio State game, let's not have delusions of grandeur here. They lost 73-14 to last year to this Ohio mm-hmm. State team. Ohio State's one of the best teams in the country. I hope they come out and compete. But about 25 points is probably just about right on the odds. But I'm really happy how they've played. They won two games in the Big Ten. It's kind of a weird year. Shit, Rutgers won a damn game. So who the hell knows? Nobody knows. And, you know, I guess I'm a sheep because I went along with it. Everybody said that Maryland was going to be a bottom feeder along with Rutgers. I mean, shit, look at Indiana. Indiana's 3-0. and so yeah. what are we talking about? It, it's it's a crazy thing. Two of juniors playing great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so this is what they got him for. They they were hoping they could strike lightning in a bottle, at the very least get a poor man's two out of the deal. And so far he's played really well, minus the first game. And if they can hit some bright spots, I mean shit. Rakeem Jarrett won Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Um, had a phenomenal game. He's everything that they thought he was going to be. And um, we'll see what happens. I think they're going to get stomped. I'm not going to make the same mistake that I made. And I told you this earlier. I'm not going to make the same mistake and be like this complete homer like I was with the fucking Washington game. And I, I was going to pick the Giants. And I didn't want people to think that I was a damn hater. And that'll never happen again. <laughs> oh, so you're saying they're, spoiler alert, for the next eight weeks, you're going to be the anti-Larry Michael? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't, no. But I definitely will be making more professional decisions. I'm, I'm going to oh. be going with my brain instead of my heart. And I don't have much of a brain anymore. <laughs> well, wouldn't you be technically going with your brain on that? I would think it wasn't really with your heart. You were thinking in terms of not pissing off the masses. Ah, fuck the masses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I truly believe that they were going to win that game pretty easily, and I should know better because apparently this will be the Giants. Well, but. I mean, with Maryland, we kind of went through the same thing last year at the beginning of the season when they beat Syracuse, they beat Howard, and we're talking about the same thing, and they went into a game with high hopes, and then the wheels completely came off where they actually got ranked for a moment. So... Let's go into this Ohio State game with low expectations, and if anything comes out of it, great. This is the concern that I have for the game, and then we can kind of wrap this up. Don't get annihilated. That's really what I would like to see. Be somewhat competitive in the game, and then you can build off of that. If you come out with another crushing game, I mean, shit, Ohio State has averaged almost 50 points a game in the last six games they've played Maryland. 50 If you can just maintain some type of sanity in the game, that's a victory for me. And that can carry on to other games in the season and say, okay, we can play with these teams. That's what I that needs to be accomplished in this. A win, let's slow down. I think this may be a little different. And and I was thinking the same thing. Maryland always seems to like come out pretty well and and you know, surprise people. But I think this is different. Number one, they're starting directly in the Big Ten, just like everybody else. But I think You have a legitimate quarterback, a dual threat quarterback that they didn't have that before that you could lean on to actually make plays. And I think even if he's half of Tua, I think you're in a good spot. Obviously, he doesn't have the same talent around him as Tua did. They're going to dual threat his ass, stomp him when he runs and stomp him when he passes the ball. I don't know. He That 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 front, if they can pass the ball, their D-backs are not as good as they used to be, but... Uh, I don't know, Matt. I, I see I see what you're saying, though. Yeah, they've got a guy that actually make plays and win for this team as opposed to win despite him. And that Minnesota game, that, that game, he put that entire team on his back when yep. they were down 14 or whatever they were. That was impressive. And Minnesota's no slouch. So so what are you saying? They're going to beat Ohio State? Is that no, what no, no I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm <laughs> saying I don't think they're going to get embarrassed. I think that it'll, they'll probably lose by like 14, something like that, two touchdowns. Uh, and, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Hey, I hope so. But 
Hope ain't shit. And Maryland's defense looks fast, too, by the way. Yeah. They're not Ohio State fast, like, to keep up with their offense. But I, that's why I don't think they're going to get completely embarrassed in this game. And, and like you said, that's a step in the right direction. But we shall see. They'll, they'll lose by 70. Like <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last thing. Let's uh, finish off with the NBA. We're going all across the board here. We're going know? across the, yeah. We got two shows a week. We really got to, you know, diversify our portfolio, you know. But yeah. So now you can just pick whatever you want. Fast forward. Hey, this sounds like a good category. <laughs> all right, move on. Yeah. Or just say to yeah. hell with the whole thing. I don't know. Because, you know, truthfully, I was kind of just sick of talking about the Washington football team all the time. And having three shows, I feel like, kind of forced us into that pigeonholing. Well, especially what the hell is there to talk about? I mean, it's, and, and it's only going to get, it's going to be more and more depressing to me as the season goes on. And I don't know if anybody noticed it in my tone, but I live and die with Washington. I feel like every show when they play shitty and, you know, the Dallas game was good, but then it's just one step forward, two steps back. I don't know. You were kind of extra angry on the Dallas game. Was I? Even though even though they won. Yeah, I wasn't really sure. Was I? Was Maybe I'm just angry all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I thought, yeah, I thought we were going to have a good time with that show. But anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. <laughs> Some good news. The NBA PA agreed to have the NBA season start back up December 22nd, which is around the corner, which I'm excited about. I know That's you are awesome, too, man. I know. Oh my gosh, let's do this. 72 game season. Uh, which, hey, that's cool. That's fine. I, I always think 82 is a little long anyway. So 72. That's totally fine. It's not like 60, like baseball. You know, it's 10 games less. And Hell, when they did that lockout season, when they had abbreviated schedule, I loved it. I thought it was yeah. great. It was every game counted. I mean, 72 isn't going to change anything. But they're not going to do the back-to-back-to-back games like they did that, that season, which right. I think was a right. lot on the players. It was fun play. for the viewers. Yeah, yeah. But the basketball just wasn't quite as good. Yeah. So the NBA draft is actually November 18th, and if you don't know, the Wizards have the ninth pick. How do you think this is going to affect things going forward, you know, with free agency coming up and trades and and everything else? Well, I think that it's just everything's just going to have to be moved and crammed into uh, just like training camp and OTAs and everything else was like with uh, with the NFL. They're just going to have to schedule things differently. I mean, damn, man, the, the NBA draft's a week away. By then, we're already halfway through November. We've got another month until the season starts. I don't know how many preseason games they're going to have. Not everything has been put out there just yet, but I mean, they've got to do training camp. We've still got trade deadlines. We've still got um, where the trades open up again. We still they haven't even worked it out. We when, when haven't <laughs> worked it out. Free agency. This sounds familiar. Yeah. The, the restart when nothing was like figured out until like a week before the season. Right, the right. So, I mean, I. I appreciate that they're doing it. I don't care how they do the rest of it. I really don't give a damn. <laughs> they could do the tr- the draft tomorrow. Preseason starts a week from today. I really don't care. I just am happy that the N- NBA is starting up again sooner than later because, again, the writing's on the it's wall with me. I'm already, our attention yeah, here. I'm already kind of, <laughs> si- like we said, kind of sick already talking about it, and we're only halfway through the year. At least now Wall coming back, Beal. You know, here we are, Bertans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I uh, got some news there. Some more trade news for Bertans. If anybody's interested, but I can't imagine anyone is, but we're going to talk about it Oh, I it thought anyway. when you automatically say trade, it would be about Beal. But no, we're no. going Bertans. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, our old friend um, NBC Sports Washington's Chase Hughes reported that two Eastern Conference teams and one from the West are interested in a sign and trade for Bertans. And that's along with the Hawks, Knicks, and Suns that are already planning to go hard for him in free agency. Signing trades are pretty tough. I think they need to have like three years and they have to stay under a certain right. cap. But I mean, they have the bird rights with Bertans. With the the fact that this is this season starting up in what, a month and a half or, or whatever, a month and three weeks, that could bode well for signing your own free agents, I, I guess. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I hope that trend is what it is because that means Bertans could potentially stay. Things are going to be too crammed too complicated for free agents to try to figure it out unless they really want to leave their team. But I, yeah. I'm thinking if they're having a balance between one or the other, hey, man, I've only got a month to fucking figure this out. Like, you either want me or you don't. Washington is sitting here. They're going to pay me what I need. I've got the bird rights here. What are you going to do? This isn't time that, you know, we got three months, figure this out and, you know, go to different places, jump around, get on private jets and go from here to there. 
and that I think bodes well for Washington. And keeping in mind with COVID still at all time highs. Right. What would happen with Washington and Murray Cooper? I guarantee that guy would have been signed if he would have come to uh, Reds to Washington Park, whatever the hell it's called, a Nova, yeah. a Nova bullshit. They don't let guys leave the park, but he had the ability. They did a Zoom call and this and that. I think something very similar is going to happen. I don't think these guys are going to go, want to go all over the place and visit these facilities and this. Check you know, out th- neighborhoods with the wife. Yeah. You know, exactly. things like that. I mean, you just don't have those opportunities to do those things. And I think it really bodes well for Washington in this case and other teams that want to hold on to their guys. I mean, mm-hmm. now trades are a little different. If they're doing a sign and trade, they're getting something out of it. Bertans really has his heart set on Phoenix. It's a great town. It's, uh, you know, everybody wants to be in Phoenix now. Maybe that's in him. I don't know. But Is that true or are you just speculating? No, no. A lot of people, well, a lot of these players love Phoenix. I mean, they talk about it all the time. It's just a great place to live for whatever reason. I've been there. The place is like fucking Mars. I mean, really, the terrain is literally, they've got their landscape workers out there raking the rocks. I'm not exaggerating like those. Well, yeah, well, the only way to get grass, you have to have turf, right? It's like field turf. There's a couple. That's, I saw a couple little patches at the airport. <laughs> a couple that patches may have been at the field air- turf. No, no, it was real. It, it was, was real. real? Okay. Yeah, I checked it. I was like, oh, man, grass. Besides that, like, it looked like, like I, the hand thing. Over yeah, like- yeah, I did. I did the little <laughs> hand thing. I grabbed some and ate it like that fucking idiot coach does. Yeah. But yeah, the rest of it looks like Mars Total Recall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so for him, he hasn't been to that many places around. Hopefully he hasn't been um, exposed to the towns and he's just gone into like spent a hotel night because of a game and doesn't really know where he would go beyond if he wants to go to a, a team that's going for a championship or something like that. But I really feel like this is a good step for players to stay with the teams that they're already at because of familiarity and because they're not going to be able to like you said, go to these other places and be showcased. And I could see a good amount of like one-year deals mm-hmm. as well this yeah. year. Just stick it out one more and not be locked into anything. But I remember Chase Hughes was saying that Bertans actually loves DC. Yeah. He lives in like this in the same area. So I don't know. I, I think I might be changing my tune a little bit because I was under the assumption that Bertans was going to go. But I think with what we're talking about, with the season starting so much sooner than I thought, I mean, I, I was thinking maybe spring, something like that, realistically. I mean, the season literally just ended, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. I mean, and this is some crazy. of these players are that, I mean, shit, LeBron's going to start the season right up. <laughs> I mean, he won't touch a basketball probably until the first game, but. They just got out of the bubble. Like, they smelled like real air. Yeah, real like- air. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about total recall. I know, man. Jeez. I'm really excited about the season starting. I mean, that's that's huge. That's so nice. I hope that everything works out. And also, they got this boost right after they declared it about now um, Pfizer coming out sooner than later with, with, with the vaccine. That might boost it even further That to get us on track. I don't know what they're going to do as far as attendance and all that. I don't even think they know, but I don't care. I'm going to be watching it on TV anyway, so what do I give a shit? See, I told you th- that COVID was going to end after the election. Yeah, that's for sure, right? It was one, there was one truth. There was a vaccine on the way. <laughs> you did say that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I watched a lot about that. This, uh, it's, it's really tough to take their word for it. Like the CEO of, of Pfizer, you want to talk about an arms race to get this damn thing out. Oh, I know. I would hope that they're going to go through the proper protocols and not just push this thing out. That remains to be seen. We know that I can tell you the NBA will have it before a lot of... Dude, before- they probably had a lot to do with the, the vaccine itself. <laughs> I mean, considering yeah, I they mean, were pumping money into shit. Well, shit. I mean, done. you looked at when the bubble happened, the ca- they were getting tests before a lot of I guess me and you, the normal people of the world, the the peons were getting. Well, no, them. they actually had a lot to do with getting the rapid test. No, um, no, that's what I mean. Yeah. That that they no, were. Well, I mean, they were putting all that money into I don't know Stanford or one of those you know smart schools that I couldn't get into <laughs> to pump that money in sure. to get that rapid test, which was you know you can get it back in like ten minutes or whatever, as right. opposed to like three or four days. So yeah, I'm I'm sure they're they're heavily involved because it benefits them. It benefits everybody, but it first and foremost it benefits them to get crowds back in the damn arenas so that they can actually start making some money again. It also was a factor of when's this gonna happen? What towns take the COVID situation more seriously? Right? Mm-hmm. Am I gonna move to a location that is still in anarchy or doesn't take it seriously. I'm, I want my family to be in a safe location. There's a lot of other factors that are going to have to take place here. And I think it is a good thing for us 
as Wizards fans because I think that that could be Bertans might sign a shorter deal. That's fine. But I think, like you said, a lot of people will. And, and um, I don't see them trading him to Atlanta because I don't know what I'd do if all of a sudden I saw him bombing away threes in the division. That would just well, be stupid. Well, and he'd automatically get COVID if he went to Atlanta anyway. So <laughs> right. that's, uh, I'm sure. I was thinking that he's a Euro, you know, obviously more on the liberal side is typically Euros are. I, I mean, he may be a, a staunch right winger or something. I don't know. I, I'm just, this is not political. I'm just saying typically that's usually what it is. And somebody like him, I'm sure he's taking this thing very seriously. Yeah. And, and DC does take it seriously outside of the celebrations that were happening outside the White <laughs> right. House. Idiots. But idiots are being so close, I mean, is what I'm saying. They and, were wearing masks. They were wearing okay. masks. <laughs> uh, I didn't see six feet, that's for sure. But I think that could bode well because of going to another location like one of these southern states like San Antonio, for instance, they're going higher, uh, much higher in those states. So hopefully that works well and Bertans will stay. Hey, I don't care stay if with it's the, fam. the zombie apocalypse in other locations. Just sign the dude and get it yeah. over with. I've said this before. I just want to give one last hurrah to this team. I'm excited. December 22nd, the season can start and know there's no fuck ups or delays or something happens out there that messes up what I want. It's all about me. Okay. <laughs> <What else> is <laughs> and I just want to see it. I want to see them make a push. I think in a season like this, where there's uncertainty, I think this is an opportunity for this team to make a run, not a run to the championship, but I think everybody's yeah. okay, going to be pressing forward. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to do it. It was a pretty long episode. So, Whew, man. Told you it'd be a little longer. Uh, Should be a fun, fun edit for me. <laughs> that's all. But <laughs> a little peek behind go- the curtain there. Whew, I'm going to bed. Uh, good for you. I'll be up till five, so I'll see you guys later. <laughs> We're on all major podcast platforms. Please rate, review, and subscribe. If you like this show, please share it on social media. Again, please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, the Facebook group, and our website, beltwaysportsbros.com. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on Friday.